Good. Uh, good morning, everybody. Um, um, to this very early session, uh, my name is Skemp. This is Bero. It's actually his seminar. I was just uh, forced uh, to come here. In case uh, you have noticed, Bero cannot talk, so I'm his voice. I'm potentially the worst possible voice that you could <laughs> wish for. Let's see if I if we get kicked off Twitch again for my insults. Um, today's talk is um, about Pass Vulcan. Um, but first of all, let's find out um, who of you is uh, still in this room because he thought it's a sleeping hall. Raise your hand. Good. Um, is any one of you actually an object Pascal programmer? Raise your hand. Yay! So we have an audience of three. That's very good. I don't know why you're already at the history slide, but um, because it's the first slide. So Vulkan is a new graphics uh, API, uh, which uh, is supposed to be replacing uh, uh, OpenGL and DirectX, and it's supposed to be cross-platform. And there are actually quite a lot of platforms where it doesn't really work on, um, but uh, we will uh, get back to this later. Uh, at this point, a warning, you will notice that uh, Biro tends to put a lot of text on his slides. So, uh, what's Pass Vulcan? It's, um, it started as, an, um, as a header translation uh, for the Object Pascal language, um, which uh, uh, already has a quite big user count. Um, but over time, as with every project from Bero, it uh, uh, became re-implementing uh, uh, humanity, uh, the planet, and everything. So um, it has one million uh, uh, features, and um, yeah, so it's it's pretty big. It's a pretty complete solution um, uh, by now. Um, Vulkan has uh, validation layers, and um, as I didn't really prepare for the seminar, I don't have any clue what they do. However, it's strongly advised to use them. Um, <laughs> yeah, but as, as you will find later on, it's uh, one of the parts of Vulkan that uh, does have um, its bugs, which is one of the strengths of this graphics API. One thing that's uh, really, really nice, uh, as you know, today you have the problem, you have the DirectX guys on Windows and you have the OpenGL guys on pretty much everything. And um, the idea behind Vulkan is that it uh, is supposed to run on every uh, platform. And um, it's, uh, it's uh, you know, so you can see it if you want, so you can see it uh, crash on Windows, you can see it non working on Intel graphics chips, but of course, you can also see that it doesn't even start on BSD. So you have a big choice of platforms uh, where you have uh, lots of uh, work to do with debugging it. But because Bero uses it, it's actually a great uh, API. It has a um, strong future if someone starts using it. Um, uh, Bero's projects, uh, as I said, they are written in Object Pascal, which uh, is not really a famous language these days. Um, but it's good to see that um, not just Bero and me are using it, um, but uh, one more person. I hope you don't die too soon. You are our last hope. Um, as with all projects from Bero, um, this stuff, actually, his code compiles everywhere. It actually works on all these platforms. Um, due to Object Pascal's uh, cross compiler, uh, 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 the Free Pascal cross compilers. And it also has one single external uh, component that you need that's uh, SDL2, uh, which is for uh, audio and, uh, uh, of course, having a, a surface uh, uh, to draw on. So it's really deployment uh, of Object Pascal. I know these days you guys use, uh, if you want to run a Hello World, you need to install Node.js, uh, 50 gigabytes to then install Python, uh, 100, 100, uh, 500 gigabytes, and in the end uh, you get your Hello World. This is actually, you get one single exe file which you can deploy, and it just works. 
However, um, as is the case with many newly designed APIs, it does have its design problems. And um, one of the things that uh, appears to be a pain from, um, uh, from what I've seen uh, is the memory management of, of Vulkan. Of course, as you uh, can imagine, memory management is always a challenge uh, uh, when it comes to uh, GPUs. And um, so the Vulkan guys have decided, let's make it an extra challenge. Let's make it extra hard. So, um, um, uh, yeah, lots of text here. <laughs> um, so the uh, uh, Bero has implemented uh, uh, his own uh, memory manager uh, uh, for Vulkan as far as I understood. Uh, correct me by kicking me if I'm I'm wrong, <laughs> and um, uh, memory managers are actually a complex beast, uh, especially if you if you need to uh, support multi-threading. Um, uh, so you need internally locking. You need to make sure uh, to clear your uh, cache lines, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So um, Vulkan memory management has all of this. It's a gigantic beast, and um, of course, not everything of it is working. For example, memory defragmentation, which always is a pain, uh, as you know from the languages that do garbage collection, uh, which is a clear sign that you put, should put the language into garbage. Um, yeah, so um, it's one of the things that uh, uh, is not widely supported, uh, the defragmentation. So over time, your memory on the GPU might fragment. So um, here's the function declaration that I will now completely read for your enjoyment. Not. <laughs> Yeah, so, uh, but you already see that it's uh, um, uh, quite a lot of um, words. So, how does the Vulkan memory allocation work? Who knows? Bebo does. Um, um, yeah, at this point, I will just read the slides. Um, so in general, it's a really flexible solution, um, uh, which is uh, trying to uh, spot memory blocks as needed, as every uh, memory manager would do by running its own heap with different block sizes, etc. And um, of course, as you might have expected, depending on the platform, uh, of course, it's buggy. Um, so uh, you have to make sure uh, that you are aware uh, of these limitations. In this case, there's an example uh, from a, an Android manufacturer, which uh, is not to be named Samsung. And um, yeah, <laughs> Zeppel, that's good. So as you can see, over time, the text on the slides becomes smaller and smaller. It's a, a challenge. Uh, if you cannot actually read this, uh, please go see a doctor um, um, to uh, have you killed. Um, so the memory management in this case um, is uh, 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 using a, a tree, or actually two trees, um, to be able to manage and find uh, uh, memory blocks. Um, um, yeah, that's, uh, uh, who of you have already written a memory manager? Any thoughts? Wow, that's actually more people than uh, using the language. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, who of you have already written a multi-threaded uh, memory manager? Aha, two hands, of course, this, let's, uh, whatever I say, when I say, uh, any of you have done blah, 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 just imagine him raising his hand. Um, so, uh, memory allocation. Um, and of course, freeing memory uh, must be uh, uh, science. Um, so, um, yeah, uh, this is how the uh, memory, uh, freeing memory uh, works. Again, it's a red-black tree involved here, um, which, uh, as you may know from uh, reading books, um, uh, needs to be balanced. So uh, you have to take care about balancing uh, uh, the red-black tree. Um, 
Um, as you can also uh, see, I'm just making this up, it looks like it has reference counting uh, on freeing these blocks. And again, you are welcome to kick me um, where I'm wrong. Um, Vulkan uses the concept of a so-called frame graph, um, um, which uh, has pretty much uh, uh, all the uh, uh, information uh, of, your, of your rendering pipeline. Um, it has a compiler, uh, which tries to optimize uh, uh, your code. And um, um, in theory, it's uh, meant to make sure that uh, your code can be paralyzed uh, in an optimal um, uh, way. So, um, uh, the, uh, uh, the frame graph um, from PassVulkan um, can do interesting things, which we potentially are going to see now. Um, no, we are not. Good. I thought there was a slide for the frame, uh, live demo from the frame graph. Maybe it will happen later. Who knows? So, um, I quickly managed, I mentioned uh, memory management uh, being hard, especially in a multi threaded, uh, multi CPU uh, uh, environment. Because obviously, as soon as you do uh, multi threaded access, which is becoming more and more important with uh, all the CPUs having so many cores. Um, you have all these things you need uh, uh, to have uh, memory barriers, um, uh, you need to have fences, etc. So in, uh, in object Pascal, that would be called critical sections, uh, semaphores. So you need to basically do locking. And of course, the big problem, uh, uh, as you multi-threaded programmers know, um, is um, that locking can lead to all kinds of new problems like deadlocks, but it can also, in the end, uh, you've created all of this wonder wonderful multi-threaded code, and then you find out, oh, it's actually due to all the locks, always one part is running. So um, I've uh, 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 um, just uh, created cooperative uh, multitasking, where stuff runs after each other. So. Um, so, in general, Vulkan is meant to be multi-threaded. It's meant to be thread safe. So, you are supposed to be able from multiple threads to uh, uh, call Vulkan functions. But, surprise, um, it does crash. So, uh, there are driver bugs because, again, multi-threading, doing it right is hard. And uh, it's also hard for Vulkan driver programmers. So. Um, but of course, luckily, uh, Bero, so the one guy with the Object Pascal uh, background, Bero has written uh, a, gigantically, a gigantic and really beautiful uh, multi-threading library, which provides lots of locking primitive, which I can highly recommend. Um, and um, yeah, so don't use uh, multi-threaded calls to, uh, uh, to Vulkan. Um, but as said, the multi-threading code from Bero works extremely well. Um, uh, so have a look at PassMP, um, you, and um, uh, you have wonderful log features, etc. So the whole PassVulkan code is uh, uh, parallelized, it's uh, uh, multi-threaded, and um, it actually doesn't crash. So, um, yeah. As mentioned before, the drivers uh, in Vulkan are um, not really uh, stable. So um, uh, when I was uh, supposed to run uh, Bero's presentation to actually have a look at it before standing here, it didn't run on my uh, a computer, uh, which has an Intel uh, a GPU. Um, yeah, so uh, you can report bugs to Bero. I reported the bug to Bero, it doesn't work. And um, yeah, there are a couple of useful tools uh, which you can use uh, with Vulkan. Um, and that's RenderDoc, which also works with uh, OpenGL. Um, uh, and um, I don't have any clue what this thing does, but uh, it appears to be a really useful tool at doing whatever it does. So here we have a live demo of a 2D uh, a, a canvas, um, uh, which you can see uses 
quite a lot of colors that uh, don't really mix well uh, with each other. So, um, yeah, so obviously uh, this is now object Pascal code uh, calling Vulkan. And, um, and this one is, is, is really nifty. As you know, uh, who in his life has already written his own user interface uh, library? Well, only one. Oh, two, three, four, five. Oh, okay, that's more realistic because everybody thinks, oh, I need to write my own window manager. I want to design my own button. And of course, Bero has done it. <laughs> <laughs> So and it actually it's actually um, it's really nice. It's uh, a vector based, uh, so it does scale well. Uh, it works on all platforms, and um, it's 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 pretty complete. So you have uh, a, a lot of um, uh, controls, and um, um, so you can run your own uh, uh, syntax highlighting editor uh, for whatever reason in your uh, application. And um, yeah, so it is, it is uh, and it actually, it uses less colors than his other examples, which I, I highly, highly welcome uh, uh, indeed. So, um, so this is the user interface, so it's, it's quite nice that you cannot only just create games or demos um, uh, with Pass uh, uh, Vulcan, but you can create um, user interfaces that actually run on a hell lot of different platforms with the same UI code. And um, uh, so that's, that's uh, actually pretty nice. And um, it also um, runs uh, on your phone. Um, and um, I'm not really sure, as we don't have a camera in the front of here, I will just throw this phone into the audience. <laughs> Free phone, everyone, so you can see the same application. You can see it, the same application, and it will now live uh, again. Button. Okay, that actually was a, was an edit. Um, my contact lenses are dirty. Um, but, um, yeah, so you can do all kinds of things. So the whole UI, it actually works exactly the same as on the desktop on, on, uh, on Android. And um, it has VR support. So if you want to create a virtual reality uh, application of the future, um, you can do it uh, with Pass Vulcan 2. And here's the bad news. Biro today learned a new thing, which is always good. Don't install Windows 10 feature updates um, before you want to do a presentation at a demo party, because guess what? Uh, the Windows feature update has broken uh, the VR support. So, <laughs> so, um, uh, so he, he was he was actually planning to have his uh, VR headset here, so uh, he could enjoy it, and you couldn't see shit. But um, uh, there potentially might be uh, a demo coming up, which is. I don't know, still doing something with, without the uh, uh, headset. Let's see what happens. Uh, another slide comes up. So uh, is that what was expected, Bero? So is there a, a, a VR demo? I will enjoy my coffee for a moment. Um, well, uh, Bero is, uh, aha, there is a demo coming up. Let's see. Mm -hmm. So um, he is uh, starting a second instance of Delphi. So I'm not sure why is the case, but we will very soon find out. That's a good thing about Object Pascal. One of the great things about uh, the language is that you can kill uh, the projector. Um, <laughs> No, one of the of the great things is the high compile speed uh, uh, because it's a one-pass compiler. So um, uh, you can actually just press F9, and two seconds later um, you see a blue screen. But um, yeah, you uh, uh, probably have to adapt the display resolution, Bero, to whatever, or you need to get support from the uh, uh, from the uh, event team. Um, yeah, that's just full HD. 
Yeah, um, so I don't know if uh, someone of the event team has an idea. Uh, do you see a signal? Ah, there's something happening. People pressing buttons. Let's see if pressing buttons uh, helps. Uh, full HD. 1080p. Mm. So in the meantime, uh, 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 as an intermission, I will tell you more why Object Pascal is a beautiful language. It is out of fashion, but it compiles really fast. You get uh, binaries which are uh, as fast if they, you have written them in, in C and compiled with GCC. But at the same time, you have a clean, clean, very clean, strongly typed uh, object-orientated language. And now, finally, we can see me. Um, um, it is an old language, but the thing is, it's backward compatible. You can still compile um, a 20-year-old code. And um, uh, in a lot of other of these hipster languages, uh, uh, they don't last longer than uh, two or three years. And uh, um, then it's uh, dead again. Yeah? Um, think of uh, the whole .NET stuff and uh, uh, all these uh, count hipster languages. So um, even if you think it's out of fashion and uh, your girlfriend will leave you if you start programming in Object Pascal, it's um, uh, you should uh, consider it. And um, um, also, uh, one of the great features of Delphi is that the IDE does never ever crash, um, which it just did. Mm. But all of this stuff, um, um, if you think that Delphi is dead, all of this stuff also works in uh, Free Pascal and Lazarus, which is an op uh, open source re-implementation of, of Delphi. So um, um, you cannot, you don't just have uh, cross-platform uh, compilers, but you can actually choose between different um, IDEs. And um, a very short moment from now, uh, we will see um, probably something. Mm -hmm. Yes, what we can see is an exception in this code. Very good. Ah, there is something. Very good. Da da. So um, here is uh, um, uh, potentially uh, a game that uh, Bero has written for. Uh, uh, for virtual reality things, and one of the things that you can do with it is press start. Press start, yeah, where is the start key on your laptop? You lost it. Okay, you need to press start on your VR headset, so... Um, <laughs> to actually see something. <laughs> I, I don't have any clue, so um, uh, let's do questions later because he has to type the answers. And um, good. Um, so um, uh, obviously, uh, Bero has a, uh, a long to-do list as always. So um, um, you might have to wait uh, another five minutes until everything is feature complete. Um, what uh, Abeo wants to do is to uh, finish the uh, GLTF um, uh, 2.0 uh, support and um, um, he actually wants to complete the game, so at one point he will implement the start button. Um, so that's uh, uh, still to do. So, and um, this leads us uh, to the moment where you actually can ask questions and uh, Biro will type the answers, and I will read them, not understanding anything. Questions. There was a question, a microphone. Please always, if you have a question, use the microphone so that the other uh, Object Pascal programmer out there who's uh, watching the stream um, uh, can hear your question. No, you cannot. No, no. The executive summary of what I just said is don't talk without a microphone. Please, I know it's early, but use your start button. Yeah, hi. Uh, is it possible to use uh, Lazarus uh, FPC instead of uh, Delphi uh, environment? Because I have uh, I run on Linux. Uh. 
It's a question that I can answer. Yes, uh, it's possible, and you can also use um, uh, Cross FPC, which is a project Bero and me did, uh, so to compile uh, for all kinds of platforms. So it works. Everything works out of the uh, Lazarus. Um, it also works with portable Lazarus, and um, you can actually uh, um, compile it for a hell lot of uh, different CPUs and platforms. Um, so, uh, for example. Uh, our wild entry coming up later is uh, uh, is based on an ARM v7 CPU. Yeah, so you can it's fully working in Lazarus uh, just as it um, uh, does in Delphi. So you don't need to pay. Next question. Come on, guys. Hmm? You had a question. What happened? Aha. Uh -huh. So um, when you're compiling for Android, how much uh, overhead do you need in, in libraries and stuff? Because you can't run uh, the, um, the native code directly, right? So um, you mean like how fat the binary is yeah, and what you, what you need to you, deploy? I, I guess you will need an APK. And um, yeah, how do you get that? So, so um, so the only thing that you need to deploy uh, to your Android phone is SDL2 and uh, the SDK from Google. I don't know what the SDK, our SDK is. And you also need that for the runtime, the SDK? No, okay, so for the, oh, the standard Android SDK, okay. But for the runtime, you don't need to have the SDK installed on the phone, no. So, so you're using the NDK? Are you using the ADK? So the thing is, whenever you ask Biro a yes or no question, uh, you get uh, five minutes of text. So That's great. <laughs> <laughs> so um, he says he's uh, just using the bin utils from IT. From IT? Oh, from it. Huh? <laughs> 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 yeah. um, so that probably is uh, a yes or no to your question. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> So, any final questions? Uh huh. Uh, you mentioned GLTF. What's that? That's a, I had the same question, but I, <laughs> I hope nobody would notice that I don't have a clue what it is. Maybe uh, type uh, uh, what it is. I, I had an idea what the F is for, uh, but it's probably wrong. So. Um, uh, let's uh, uh, see what uh, GLTF, uh, uh, whatever is, GL, uh, in the meantime, while we wait for this answer, um, ah, okay, so uh, GLTF is actually a 3D model file format, uh, which you can obviously use to store um, 3D models, so, um, yeah, that should answer the question. So very soon you can even load models. That's um, good. Uh, have you any plans to port uh, Pass Vulcan to another programming language? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Or, Don't. or maybe uh, release uh, memory manager separately and uh, port it uh, to C, for example. Yeah. Um, so, um, as you may know, there's another really, really popular <laughs> tool from Embarcadero, um, which is C++ Builder. Yeah, so it's the Delphi uh, uh, compatible C++ implementation. Uh, from what I know, that probably only works in Windows, right? But C++ builder can consume Delphi units. Of course, uh, what Beru could do, but probably uh, won't, because we uh, hate all non-object Pascal programmers, is uh, uh, he could uh, create a, a flattened interface, so you have to have a, uh, a library that you can link, uh, so a, a C uh, a flat uh, interface. But um, uh, from what I see, what I'm seeing, all of the interfaces are object orientated. Um, yeah. Any more questions? 
you want to learn object Pascal, you want to learn object Pascal. It's the future of the past. Um, so it looks like there are no more questions. So um, yeah, um, thank you very much, uh, Biro, for this uh, really, really interesting seminar. Thanks. <laughs>